In this tutorial, we'll show you how to radiometrically calibrate an ocean optic spectrometer in Spectra Suite for applications that use a cosine corrector. For performing this calibration, we'll use an HR2000 Plus CG spectrometer, a DH2000 Cal calibrated light source, a 1000 micron UV Viz fiber optic patch cable, a CC3 UV cosine corrector, and Spectra Suite software from Ocean Optics. To begin, connect the USB cable to your spectrometer and to the USB port on your computer. Connect one end of the patch cable to the SMA connector on your spectrometer. Connect the other end of the patch cable to the cosine corrector. Remember that once connected, the entire system must remain intact for the calibration to stay valid. Insert the cosine corrector into the port on the front panel of your light source. Make sure that the cosine corrector slides all the way into the port on the light source and then retighten the set screw. When performing an absolute irradiance calibration of a UV Vis spectrometer with a DH2000 Cal calibration source, you only need to operate one lamp at a time during the calibration. First start the deuterium lamp by pushing the blue button on the front panel of the light source. You'll need to wait at least 20 minutes for the lamp to warm and to stabilize. With your setup connected and the lamp warm, launch Spectra Suite software. The calibration of the UV Viz spectrometer could seem confusing at first. Clicking on the Scope Mode Spectrum Graph activates your cursor. This also activates two icons in the lower right-hand corner of the Spectrum Graph. Select the Peaks icon. This will display a vertical line on the screen, which is your peak baseline. Next, click the Manually Set Numeric Ranges icon located just above the Spectrum Graph. The Set Zoom Ranges box will appear. Set the x-axis range maximum to 410 nanometers. Click Apply and then Close. Now, set a box cart with the width of 5 in the top toolbar. Next, we'll manually adjust the integration time until part of the displayed UV is at or just slightly above the peak baseline on the display. Make a note of this integration time since you'll need to input this value later on. For this case, our integration time was 2.7 seconds. Close the spectrum graph by clicking X. Now, we'll start a new absolute irradiance measurement by clicking on File, then New, and New Absolute Irradiance Measurement in the menu. You'll see the Absolute Irradiance Setup Wizard appear. Select New Spectral Acquisition and then click Next. Make sure that your spectrometer is highlighted. This indicates that this is the source of spectral data. Now click Next. Select New Calibration in this window and then click Next. In this window, we'll enter the integration time that we used before. Also, you'll want to set the boxcar width to 5 just as we did before. Add any averaging at this point and click Next. In the next window, click the yellow light bulb button to store the reference spectrum, and then click Next. Now you'll need to block the path of the light source or close the shutter. Click the gray light bulb button to store the dark spectrum, and then click Next. In the next screen, you'll be asked to load the lamp file from the CD included with your light source. Insert the CD and browse its contents. Select the LMP file that contains UV-CC in the file name and click Open. Now click Next. In this screen, we'll need to input our fiber diameter or collection area. Since we're using a CC3 UV cosine corrector, 
We'll input 3900 microns in the fiber diameter under collection area. The spectrometer calibration preview graph should show two lines of different colors, nearly one on top of the other. This indicates that the calibration file and the measurement of the lamp are in agreement. SpectraSuite generates a calibration file for your spectrometer at the end of the Absolute Irradiance Wizard. To save this file for future use, simply click the Save to File button, give the file a name of your choosing, and save it in a location of your choice. Clicking Finish brings you back to the main SpectraSuite window. In the main SpectraSuite window, you'll see a graph of the calibration light source a good test to see if you've performed the calibration correctly is to cross-reference the values listed in the LAMP file with the values being measured in SpectraSuite. For instance, our LAMP file shows a value of 13.8 microwatts per centimeter squared per nanometer at 300 nanometers. Clicking on the spectrum graph at 300 nanometers to activate the cursor, we see that the value at 300 nanometers is approximately 13.7 microwatts per centimeter squared per nanometer. Therefore, it looks like we've done the UV calibration correctly. Next, we'll perform the VIS calibration using the halogen bulb of the light source. Turn off the deuterium bulb by pressing the blue button on the front panel. Now press the red button on the front panel to activate the halogen bulb. Remember to allow at least 20 minutes before performing your calibration. Now we'll combine the UV and the VIS calibration files. To do this, click Processing, then Absolute Irradiance, then Combine Calibration Files in the menu. Under Deuterium Calibration in the next window, Click the Browse button and browse to the location where your calibration files are stored. Select the UV calibration file and click Open. Under Tungsten Calibration, click the Browse button, select the VIS calibration file and click Open. SpectraSuite will automatically select the optimal boundary wavelength for combining these files. If you wish to manually select this boundary wavelength, you can use the up and down arrows to alter the wavelength value. Once you've loaded the two files, click Save. Naming your file and saving it will bring you back to the previous window, which you can now safely close. Now click File, then New, then Absolute Irradiance Measurement. Select New Spectral Acquisition and click Next. Make sure that your spectrometer is highlighted once you've done this, click Next. Select Get Irradiance Calibration from File and click Next. Now select the combined calibration file that we saved before and click Next again. In the next window, a fiber diameter of 3900 microns should be automatically populated. If so, click Next. At this stage, you should be pointing the cosine corrector at the sample that you wish to measure. In this tutorial, we'll measure the overhead fluorescent lamps that light our lab. Clicking the Set Automatically button lets the software select the best integration time for your experiment. Add any averaging and boxcar at this point and then click Next. Covering the cosine corrector with a light blocking substance Click the gray light bulb button to update the dark spectrum. Clicking on Finish brings up the absolute irradiance spectrum graph. The noise on either end of the spectrum is due to lack of signal in those regions. In the range of 400 to 750 nanometers, we see the typical spectrum for fluorescence lighting. Once your system has been calibrated, you don't need to recalibrate each time you want to take a measurement. These simple steps should help you get your ocean optics spectrometer calibrated using both the UV and the VIS sources. For more information, please visit us online at oceanoptics.com and tune in again next time to spectroscopytv.com.